Hello and welcome back to CS11. This is lecture 15b, where we'll continue our introduction to classes and objects. Let's talk about how you define a class. A class definition consists of two main parts. One is the actual definition for the class. Use the word class, then the name of the class that you want to define, and then a pair of curly braces, followed by a semicolon, one of the few places where a semicolon comes after a closing brace. Then inside here, we list the members of the class. And that those can either be function prototypes, where we give the prototype or header for a function that we'll define later, or can be a variable. We've talked previously about the members can be public or private, and you can indicate that with the word public or private followed by a colon. So here we'll say public, and here we'll say private. And these are called member access specifiers. Public and private. And then any members that you list after word public are public members, and any members that you list after private are private members. So for example, here we could say string name int pages. Notice those look just like regular variable declarations, even though they're special. They're not locals, they're not globals, they're member variables, and are going to work a little bit differently than other variables we've seen before. Okay, um, and so here we can list prototypes such as So here looks like a prototype for a function. It's got a return type, a name of the function, parentheses. This function doesn't have any parameters. We could list another function in here. Void set name string. So here's a member function called set name that has a void return type and that has one parameter, a string. We've talked a little bit about the constructor. A constructor is a function with the same name as the class. One important thing to know about a constructor is a constructor never has a return type. And if you list one or put one in there, it's going to cause some strange errors. So definitely don't do that. So constructor has no return type, not even void. Okay, so this is what we would call our class definition. And in order to complete the definition of this book class, we then would need to provide the code for these functions. So the member functions are coded with this syntax. Let's code this one here, get pages. So first, we're going to put the return type, then the name of the class, then two colons together. That's the scope resolution operator, then the name of the function, and then our parameters, if any, and our opening and closing braces that we see on every function, and then the code for that function. In this case, it would just say return pages. Okay, so what this says is that there's a function named get pages that belongs to the book class and has return type of int, no parameters, and then there's the code for it. And so when the compiler sees this, it can say get pages that matches with book and use that to match it against this definition that it saw earlier. Okay, so that's a little bit about the syntax of defining a class and in the next video we'll actually code this.